Hello. We miss seeing you very much, but are praying that you are all well. We are making this video to help explain how to use Admentum and give you confidence in using it. However, feel free to email us questions at any time as we are here to help. Let's get started. In order to use Admentum, you will first need to log in using a password and username that you were given in an email that looks like this. If you have not received this email, it may have gone to the incorrect email address or an email address that you are not currently using. If that is the case, please email your English or math teacher and let them know you have not received your course information. We will then be able to forward you this information through a copy of the email that we were sent. As you can see, in this email, you will be given a link to log on to Admentum. This link here is the one that you should use every time you log in. Your username will be listed under the link along with a temporary password. Once you log in, please change your password and make sure you write your username and password down where you can access it easily. The link in the email should take you to this web page. If the web page looks different, you are in the wrong spot. Once you're on this web page, go ahead and enter the username that you were sent along with the password. Once you have logged in, you will see a page that looks like this. When you scroll through, you will see each of the courses you are enrolled in. As you can see, this student is enrolled in both a language arts and a math course at BCS. As a side note, in order to change your password, you need to go here to My Settings and then click on My Account. Once you're ready to enter a course, go to the course you're looking at and choose Launch Course. Even if there are no assignments listed here, there will be assignments within the course itself. Launching the course will lead you to a page that looks like this where your courses that are active are listed. Look for the course name. This is Language Arts, and here you have Math Pre-Algebra. And when you are ready, select an activity. If you've never logged in before, you will select a new activity. If you have logged in before, then click All Activities. You will then be in the course page. Before I show you how to complete your work, I want to clarify a few of the symbols and wording that are used in Edmentum. Here you see something called the pacing status. It may say on pace, ahead of pace, or even behind. That is something that you can ignore as long as you're following your teacher's instructions. For example, English courses have received a lesson and assignment guide. For eighth grade, this looks like this. It is a PDF that was sent in an email, but is also available under the Resources tab in RenWeb. And each day's work is being pasted into the homework section of RenWeb as well. As long as you are completing the work that is listed here on the day that is listed, you are on pace, even if Edmentum says otherwise. Should you have any questions or concerns about pacing, however, please contact your teacher. Another section of Edmentum that differs from our courses is the course grade. In Edmentum, you will see that you begin with a 0F. That does not mean you actually have an F in the course. What it means is you have not yet completed the coursework. However, even as you are completing coursework and that grade begins to change in Edmentum, that is not your grade in the class you should continue to check RenWeb for accurate grades. Only RenWeb will have grades that count towards your ultimate grade in the class. If you have questions, ask your teacher. Finally, to clarify about the due date for the course, although this due date, for example, is set in July of this year, that again is not accurate. This is because Edmentum is designed as a semester-long program, but we are only using a portion of it. Therefore, as stated before, 
please refer to the lesson and assignment plans that are listed in RenWeb to make sure you have accurate due dates for all assignments. Once you're ready to begin your assignment, please look down where the units are listed and find the unit that your teacher has asked you to work on. When you're ready to work on the unit, go ahead and click on it to launch the unit information. Clicking on the unit will show you what activities are under that unit. For example, this unit has a tutorial and then a mastery test. This symbol means that the mastery test is currently locked. You will not be able to take it until the teacher unlocks it. Opening the tutorial will take you to your coursework. Tutorials are a series of slides that have either videos, reading information, or questions for you to answer. You can tell the amount of slides at the top, and each slide is numbered here. To navigate through the slides, use the arrows on the upper right hand side. Before I show you the slides, I would like to show you the resources that are on the left side of the screen. You have a table of contents. If you ever want to refer to that, it will show you what each slide is about in the unit. There is a note taking tool. This can help if you would like to take notes about the information the slides are sharing with you, which is a good idea since questions that come later in the unit often have to do with these slides and their information. The resources tab is just a quick area to access links to outside information that are embedded within this tutorial. The dictionary will allow you to define words as you read. The reading tool can let you have settings that will allow the slides to be read aloud to you. Translate. And then a highlighter, which as you can see, you can choose different colors or remove highlights within the text. When you're on a slide, look at what type of activity it is and complete the activity. For example, this slide is a short video. You would hit the play button to play the video, and once it is complete, use the arrow in the upper right hand corner to move on to the next activity. Some slides, like this one, just have introductory information. Others will again have video content or questions for you to answer. You may have noticed that each slide I clicked changed the number up here. This again is where you look to see which slides you are on in order to fulfill what your teacher has asked in the lesson plans. When you come to a question, the question may be an objective one, meaning that it would be multiple choice or matching or it may be a short answer, like this one, that asks you to type a response into the box that they provide. You can see that you're allowed to use bolding, italics, underlining, change font sizes, use bullet points, etc. And above it, you have the instructions. However, it is very important to follow your teacher's specific instructions for each assignment. For example, this assignment does not specify the length or style of the writing. Therefore, the teachers for this course have specified that they would like one C style paragraph in this box. They also clarified down here what they would like students to write about. So please be very careful to read assignment directions before completing anything, even in Admentum. Once you're finished with the assignment, you must click Submit for it to be sent to your teacher. When you have completed the required amount of slides for the day, hit Save and Exit. That will save your exact spot and open the tutorial where you left off the next time you are in Admentum. It will also show the teacher that you have completed the slides that they asked you to for that specific day. Saving and Exiting will also take you back to your course page where you can switch courses by going back to home or if you're finished for the day with Edmentum, you can sign out. 
When you sign out, you will be taken to a page that looks like this. However, you can go ahead and exit out of that page because it is not the correct sign-in for Admentum for you. So you will want to go back to the original link from the email every time you want to log in. As a reminder, this is what the correct login page should look like. Thank you so much for viewing this video. We hope it is helpful. And again, we are always here to answer any more questions you may have.